Now to create part two of the Screencast tutorial, I'm actually using Screencast-O-Matic, and if you're using a Mac, at least it's been in my experience, this might be the better way to go. It's just a little bit more stable. Uh, you're using Java basically to make all of this happen, and for whatever reason, using uh, using a Mac machine, Screencast-O-Matic, as I'm doing now, works slightly better than Screener. If you're using a PC, the intuitive nature of Screener.com is uh, might be a little bit easier. Another benefit of using Screencast-O-Matic is that you get 15 minutes to record for free rather than just the five minutes. Um, it's slightly clunkier. It doesn't look as fabulous as Screener.com, but I really like Screencast-O-Matic, again, especially if you're using the Mac. The point is, though, at the end of the day, what you're going to have is an option to download your file, your screencast, so you get to own it, and it's going to be in a non-proprietary format. format. Um, several, uh, there are several options out there, some of them which are supported by various publishers, um, but what they ultimately do is uh, charge you for the screencast that you're making. And the file that you can download in is a proprietary file, meaning you have to continue with that service or you lose all of your effort and work. Um, one of the benefits of using Screencast-O-Matic or Screener and just not going down that proprietary road is if at the end of the day you decide to use a different publisher uh, that's connected with a certain uh, supported format or service like Tegrity, for example, uh, you own those things and you can open them up in any sort of uh, open access software that's out there uh, or upload them to YouTube. It's going to be much more difficult if your output is proprietary format. That all makes sense in just a moment. And again, we captured our first screencast using screener.com. And uh, when we got to that screen, uh, we have the option, uh, once we finished, we hit the stop button, we have the option then to publish our uh, screencast. So it lets you preview it, everything looks good. Uh, you can put some information in there, what's this all about, the screencast, and then you publish it. It'll take about two to three minutes, depending on how long your screencast is. Uh, then ultimately you'll get a screen like this, and as you can see over on the right hand side you have those more op op actions options. You can download that MP MP4 file, that's going to be a file that you can play in iTunes and um, any sort of media player, and you own that now. Your screencast is yours. Um, you can also publish this to YouTube. Publish to YouTube. Um, you would need a YouTube account in order to make this happen. This is the procedure that I'm going to follow just now. But before we do that, just a few other options. You can see that there's some embed code under Share the Screencast. And the embed code is what you, by clicking on that, uh, that's what you're going to use to embed directly into your, say, your Blackboard course or your Moodle course. And it's going to show up right on a screen. It's really nice. Uh, and then you have the URL there so you can direct students uh, to screener.com. Now that is assuming that you want to use Screener as your sort of delivery mechanism, um, but you can also publish to YouTube and you have that same functionality. So when I click, click that Publish to YouTube button, I've asked to put in my username and password. So you'll want to do that before you get going. And once you've logged in, as you can see right at the top, I have a list of uh, screencast that I've already created and here's the screencast that has been ported over by Screener. Screencast-O-Matic is going to give you those options as well. And once I get in there I then have the option to add my own information so you'll want to you'll want to change the default information that Screener has plugged in here. So in this case how to use Screener to create free embeddable online lectures. Uh, and of course, YouTube is going to give me the option to download the file, make an archive of it. One of the benefits of using uh, this method, so working in screener.com or working in Screencast-O-Matic and then uploading over, is now you're creating an archive using a service. YouTube is not going to wait. It's going to be stable. It's going to work like it's supposed to. And you can create, um, do a number of things. That's what we're going to talk about next. So here I am within the video manager, and um, uh, this is another reason you might want to use this method. Um, once students um, or your viewers start clicking and making and making responses, perhaps comments, um, you can actually track um, how many how many views you're getting. You can track where those views are coming from. You find a lot of information 
about how people are interacting with your videos, which ones are working and which ones aren't. I'm going to go into the video manager now just to few, so show a few other things. So I'm going to click on how to use, this is our screencast that we created, and it's going to load up here. So it's actually pretty easy to make your own screencast, and uh, as you can see right now, um, I'm at screen. So there it is. I moved from screener to YouTube. And now what can I do? Um, also note that I'm over the five minute mark at this point, so another benefit of using uh, screencast o -matic. we get 15 full minutes to take a longer video if we want to. Um, but I can do a number of things, and this is important as well. In the information that I've create, created right down here, you'll notice I put in a URL, and those, if you put in the full URL, uh, those are going to be hyperlinked or hot. So if you want students to watch the video and then perhaps link out to some uh, um, outside re resource, you can do that. Just drop the HTTP colon forward slash squared in front of there, and uh, it's going to work really nice, nicely. Well, we can also share this video. So if I click, for example, on share, it's going to give me the option to link directly to that YouTube video. But I can also do more. I can embed, and this is really important if I want to bring this into my online course. When I click embed, this is my embed code that's going to be important to us in just a moment. Um, I don't want to show suggested videos when the video finishes. I, su I suggest you select that. Uh, and then you can select how you want this to display, display for students. Um, I think uh, you, the bigger, bigger is always better, of course, uh, but maybe some of your students don't have those super big screens. So let's just go with 853 times 480. We can create a custom width. We're not going to do that. We're just going to go along with that. But the point here is that you have lots of options to choose from. And again, we're going to be able to come back into YouTube and see how students are actually interacting and using this. So I'm going to create, I'm going to copy rather this custom code and hit the copy button. And now I'm going to log into my Blackboard course and actually embed this um, into my Blackboard course. Now, if you're using Desire to Learn, if you're using Moodle, uh, Canvas, then any number of other learning management systems, uh, you can do this same thing. We're going to use Blackboard 9. So now I've logged into my Blackboard course. Here I am, and um, I'm in this area um, that I've titled How to Customize Your Course uh, Using Multimedia in particular. I'm going to go into the edit mode in Blackboard. And then I want to simply build content. Now, I could build a number of things here. I can build um, an assessment. I can create a journal entry. Anything that I create, let's say I wanted to create a discussion board and have students discuss this um, particular screencast, um, I can click on Discussion Board. Uh, I'm going to select a new discussion board forum. Create new forum. And we're going to say, discuss this screencast tutorial. Now, why am I doing this? It's really just to get across the point that you can have students watch multimedia and um, do something. You don't need, simply need in Blackboard to create an item. Anything that you create, a journal entry, an assignment, um, even an individual question that uh, in, an, in an assessment that you've created, you can embed video, and those videos can include anything as long as you have the embed code. So some further instructions, watch this video, and discuss among yourselves your question. I'm sure will be much more complicated and involved, but for the point uh, of making, uh, I mean, that I want to make right here, this will be sufficient. Now this is really important. We want to toggle to the HTML source mode. And to do that, I'm going to click on this icon here. So we have embed code, and we want to take that embed code, and we want it's, it's HTML, and we want Blackboard to render it as an HTML. So you can have your information here. We can change, change that to Verdana. We can make, let's make that a little bigger. And then once you've done that editing. You want to slip into your HTML mode. All right? This is don't this is the important point. 
Um, don't get overly concerned with what you're seeing here. This is the code that's controlling that text that we just created. Just go to the end and paste, and it's gonna bring over, I made one little mistake there, it's gonna bring over that video from YouTube. Now, when I come out of that mode, I might also, it's completely up to you, I'm going to put a tag in there to center it. So open center, close center, that's gonna center the video. You don't have to do that yourself. And I'm going to now come out of the HTML mode by just clicking again. When I do that, as you can see, there's my, there are my, is my instruction, and then there's that video. So once we've done that, we're going to hit submit. And now I want to select discussion boards with video, click next. Um, this is again where I'm actually giving students the formal, inst formal instructions for this discussion board. So it all makes sense in a moment. And then I'm going to hit s submit. In Blackboard Mine 9, every time you create some new object, it's going to go to the bottom. And as we slide down there, and if I just hit the play button, So it's actually pretty easy to make your own screencast. And uh, as you can see right now, um, I'm at screeners.com working for you, screencast -o -matic. So that's pretty all there, all the, it's pretty much all there is to it. At this point, student would click on discuss the screencast tutorial to go into the discussion board. You've had them watch the video. And again, you can do this with anything that you can create within the Blackboard or your Moodle environment or desire to learn. You can embed these videos. That's pretty much it. Thanks for your time.